caught her at an adult party. I caught my girlfriend cheating on a girl's weekend getaway. I had to learn the hard way. True story. I've heard several stories on your channel, online forums, and even other YouTube channels. Still, I continued to date. Maybe it's the nature of me. I want a family. I didn't prejudge women I met, but I was cautious. And the moment I sense something is off, I'm gone. Now, one may say, well, allowing your girlfriend to go on a girl's trip is a red flag. First, I didn't believe in telling a girlfriend that she can't hang out with friends. A girl hanging out with her friends wasn't enough for me to kick her to the curb. It's a bit silly, actually. But again, I will check on it just like I did in my situation. And what I saw was enough for me to leave my ex-girlfriend. She literally was being raw, dogged by some random guy on her weekend trip. I actually saw everything with my own two eyes. So my ex-girlfriend, Janelle, I met at school. We attended the same school. She was working on a cosmetology license and I was working on my barber's license. It's one big school with a barber school and hairdresser school and we gave cheaper services to clients with them understanding that we are all just students. Anyway, even though the schools are separated, we all venture to the other side every once in a while. The girls always made their way to our side, the barber side, usually just trying to be seen by us. You guys know how some women are. Some would come over asking certain men that they had crushes on for help if a customer on their side had a low cut and maybe needed a trim or lineup. So anyway, Janelle actually never came over and I met her when I went over to the cosmetology side to help line someone up and fade their hair. It was Janelle's customer and after I finished, she gave me a hug and thanked me. I said, no problem, don't worry. If you need anything else, just come on over. That's when she asked for my number so she could just text me if she needed me. She ended up texting me that night and we talked for some time. We hit it off very well. Janelle is a very beautiful woman. We became close friends and eventually started going out. What threw me for a loop was that she was so willing to go Dutch on dates and even pay for dates fully. This was completely different to me. Most women require a man to already make six figures, be above six foot, and have a 16-inch Johnson. Basically, they want the impossible, is what I'm getting at there. We'd have a lot of fun together, and through school, we continued to date and see each other. Even though I started school before Janelle, she finished before me. But I was done, and in a barbershop soon after. By that time, we were in a committed relationship and already talking about moving in together and also opening up our own shop that handled both haircuts and a salon. In total, we were together for one and a half years. Most of that time, we were good. She'd spent time at my place, I'd stay at hers. You know, typical Netflix and chill, or we'd game together. Go out for drinks or dinner, and she never had a single issue paying. She felt if we weren't married, then we both should pay for dates, and I agreed. My family loved Janelle, and her family seemed to like me also. Of course, I was starting to think about marriage. She seemed to check all of the boxes. To fast forward towards the end of our relationship, which ended in 2023. Some of her friends from the salon she worked at wanted to take a weekend trip down to Louisville, Kentucky. We stay in Cincinnati, Ohio. There was some sort of retreat down there, supposedly for ladies only. She told me the name and where it would be located. I was cool with everything. I didn't have any gut feelings about it at all. The day for her to leave was coming up. It was a Friday. We spent that entire day at my apartment, basically getting it in all day. I don't know what it was, but I just put in the extra effort that day. Apparently, it wasn't enough after what I discovered. I dropped her off later that night at her friend's home, and they were to drive down to Kentucky that night. We talked when she got there, and the next day, Saturday, I went to work at the shop. Around noon or so, the barber next to me was talking to his client and was asking him why he'd been so quiet because he's usually very talkative and outgoing. 
The guy says, man, I just broke up with my girlfriend. I just feel like crap, man. Her and her girls were headed to Kentucky last night, and before they left, I snooped through her phone when she was in the shower. He said, man, they had some big orgy lined up for her and her girlfriends and some other guys. I chimed in and said, what? That's cold, man. What part of Kentucky they do stuff like that in? The client said, Louisville. Another barber started cracking jokes about hillbillies and other crap, and I hushed him to get more information from the client in the chair. I asked, so how long you've been with your girl? He told me a couple years, and I did remember one of Janelle's friends from the salon had been in a relationship for some time, but I didn't know how long. I asked, so what you do for a living man? I heard the best way to move on is to throw yourself into your work. He then said, he works in construction, and he's even helped pay for his now ex-girlfriend's way through cosmetology school. When he said that, I then felt a gut feeling. I said to myself, ain't no freaking way. After I finished the cut I was doing, I walked outside and video called Janelle. She answered and said they were all just waking up. I asked her how the resort was, and she said it's amazing. I said, that's the resort. It looks like an apartment or something. Janelle started stuttering, saying, yeah, yeah, we ended up getting an Airbnb because the resort was booked, but we go there and then come back to sleep here. It all worked out for us, baby. I said, that's weird. Why didn't you tell me that? She said she didn't think it was such a big deal. I told her I thought it was a bit suspicious and sneaky. I had to get to my next client as he had just arrived, and I ended the call. While I was preparing to start on my client, Janelle texted me saying, I'm so sorry and I hope I haven't done anything to ruin your trust in me. I'm here with Stephanie, Marla, Kim, and Janice. She sent me a picture of them all standing in the kitchen of what it looked like the same air B&B she was in. I texted back, have fun. I finished cutting around 8 p.m. that day. I didn't even check my phone. I was taking walk-ins and everything. When I finally looked at my phone, Janelle had sent me two texts. One reply saying, I will try, but I can't wait to be back in your arms. Then another around 5 p.m. of her in a nice outfit saying they're going out to dinner. I decided to search the names of the girls on Janelle's Facebook. I went through most of them, and then I remembered. I forgot one. Janice. I found her on Janelle's friend list, and Janice was streaming on her Facebook page. Guys, this was the red pill. Ancestors looking out for a simp, because what Janice said in the stream was perfect. I could see Janelle, along with the other girls in the video, and Janice says, Whoever in Kentucky come get at us, we still got plenty of energy. Last night wasn't nearly enough. I thought, what? I kept listening, and this idiot says the exact address of their Airbnb, inviting people over to party. I couldn't believe it, but I was ecstatic. I wrote it down and guessed where I headed after work, straight to Louisville, Kentucky. I get there, and it's a house sort of on a hill. All the homes were on a hill. It's close to 11 at night at this time, and you can hear loud music coming from the house, and I can see people inside. Janelle still hasn't messaged me or anything. I walk up to the front door and clearly. I hear smacking and sex going on along with R&B music playing. You can hear the moans and everything. That right there was enough, but I just needed to see this for myself. The door was locked, but I just reacted and kicked the door open. Everyone in the house was butt booty naked, wong swinging, areolas out, people in the act, and my girl, Janelle, under some guy on the couch, and he did not have protection on. I said, really you stank bee guys. Janelle's reactions was, what are you doing here? I turned around and I left, got in my car and drove all the way home. Janelle was blowing my phone up and her friend texted me saying, you are paying for the gosh darn door. They're going to take the damage off of my credit card dummy. I blocked her, and after telling Janelle to F off, I blocked her as well. 
That was not the end of Janelle, so Janelle started showing up at my shop every time I worked, Tuesday through Saturday, nonstop. Guys, this happened and went on for close to one month. She was not giving up. She told me she would do absolutely anything to win me back. What she did was a drunken mistake. She should have never gone. When I finally would speak to her, and I asked her, so did you have it all planned out, or it just happened? She could barely answer the question, which told me it was premeditated. Also, according to that client that spilled the beans that gave me the red flag, it was definitely premeditated, but whether it wasn't or not. She was not coming back into my life. She knew not to show up at my apartment because the first time she did, I went off on her and I got in her face. She was terrified, so she was going to try to win me back. She made sure it was in public. She literally come to the barbershop and stand there and call my name, trying to get my attention. Other barbers would just be sitting there laughing. She'd say, I know you can hear me. Just say something to me, please. I'm nothing without you. This woman was begging me in front of customers and everything, just embarrassing herself. Janelle was upset that she got caught cheating. She didn't care that she was cheating. I know if I took her back, she would have done it again and again and again. She would have tried to hide it better. The only reason she was fighting for me back is because she was embarrassed that she got caught. Nothing more to it. One time when she came to my barbershop, she sat there in front of everybody and was saying how she paid back her friend for the door that got damaged. They charged thousands of dollars of damage and added a bunch of other stuff that wasn't even damaged in the place. I just shrugged my shoulders and said, okay, not my problem. I wasn't scared that I would get in trouble for kicking that door. I knew it would fall on them. And if her friend was really bout it, bout it like that, while she was talking all that trash in my text messages, she should have sent somebody to the shop to handle it. Nobody ever came, and she better be glad they didn't, because I would have protected myself by all means necessary. Eventually, Janelle gave up on just popping up at the shop. She didn't give up at trying to get back with me, though. Who do you think made her way to Facebook? I forgot to block her on there. Janelle sent waves of messages and tagged me in post saying, would I do this in public, in front of everybody if I didn't truly love you? She was embarrassing herself. Well, even her own family members were telling her to never ever beg for a man back. If he doesn't see your worth, then he doesn't deserve you, blah, blah, blah. I definitely chimed in on some of those posts and talked about how she cheated on me and was having three ways in big adult parties down in Kentucky. That's when she blocked me. I had hoped that that would be enough to get her to leave me alone and to get the message across. Nope. Guess what happened next, guys? I received a letter in mail. I was to appear in court. Janelle was suing me for $3,000 in small claims court saying that I had damaged their Airbnb. Not only the door, but I went inside and damaged something in the kitchen. The stove handle was ripped off of the stove. All types of crap but it all came up to like $2,400 or something. That's what they were charged for from the owners of the Airbnb, but she was suing me for $3,000. You guys want to know how much she got out of me in small claims court? Zero dollars. I lied my butt off. I didn't know what she was talking about. I never kicked the door and I never stayed in any Airbnb. There was no proof that I was ever there. It never happened. Yep, I sure did. And whoever in the comments has a problem with me lying in court, I don't care. I did what I had to do to get out of that situation. She needed to suffer those consequences. Janelle and her friends, that is. There was absolutely zero proof of me saying I was coming down to kick in any door making any threats or anything. I wasn't there. No video footage. Nothing and none of her friends came to her defense. She had no witnesses. I don't know if they all fell out or what. Probably so. All over the money. Janelle sat in there and cried her eyes out, saying that I was getting away with the crime. I stole her money, and I've already taken away from her already. She even threatened to spit at me. In front of everyone. 
She felt bad. Oh, well, that's what happens. You don't screw people over like that. You sit there and lie in my face. What type of person are you? That Friday we screwed all day long. You go down to a different city and state and needed to screw some more. What is wrong with you? I never suspected her to be this way. Outside of the courtroom, Janelle was telling me how she was going to get her brothers and her cousins to off me. Right there on the street saying, they're going to catch me slipping in the streets. They're going to get me one day, whether it's at the barber shop or at my place. I have not moved. I still stay in the same apartment complex. I do live in a different unit, but it has nothing to do with being afraid. They'll do something, but that's neither here nor there. For the record, guys, I did go and get tested to make sure I was good, because for your girl to be screwing you no protection and going somewhere else and screwing someone else who she probably didn't know without any protection. That's freaking scary. I almost went monk after that relationship. I just didn't want to deal with anyone because I just didn't trust anyone. That's just so disgusting and nasty. I don't know what's wrong with our women these days, man. They're so promiscuous. They just need it all the time from different men. Even in the music today, the music is freaking disgusting. You guys listen to this crap these days. I'm sure you don't listen to it. Have you ever came across any of the chicks? Meg, the stallion, Glorilla. These girls are disgusting. The music videos are even disgusting. Just throwing around nasty snatch everywhere, swinging it all in the air. I know those video sets stink. These women practically promote being promiscuous, selling your body to any and everybody. It's cute to them. Having a high body count is cool these days among women. What world are we living in? What the heck is going on? You have to be an absolute fool to want to settle down with anyone these days. For what? Women are asking men to provide seven figures for them to live, just so they can go out and cheat on you. I need a man to bring this to the table and that to the table. What are you bringing to the table? I am the table. Dumb response. How are you the table? You're a freaking bill that's going to cheat on me and expose me to STDs. These days, any man stressing over a woman that he's with, wondering her whereabouts and what she's doing behind his back, he's a freaking nutcase. Drop her. It's not worth it. Too much money out here. Guys, ever since I stopped dating Janelle, I got into the ice machine business. I have three ice machines in my city. I basically have two full-time jobs that make good money, and I plan on getting more machines and getting into more business ventures. Focus on that. Forget focusing on getting a woman to stay faithful, trying to settle down and have a family. I promise you, these women don't want it these days. They don't want nothing to do with anything traditional on their part, but they definitely want a traditional man. I'm so glad to hear a lot of my friends and co-workers, brothers and cousins, all feel the same way. We've all been done dirty. I know men, and I don't condone this, and I told these guys that this is wrong, but I know men that have wives in their rotation. These women found idiots to marry them, and they're cheating on them. And guess what, guys? A couple of these women don't even work. They are stay-at-home wives with no children, and they're getting their backs broken by men that I know on a weekly basis, by the way. One of the guys told me the wife is falling in love with him and saying that she would love to leave her husband, but her husband makes such great money so she can't just leave. But she needs somebody that makes that type of money along with the Johnson that my buddy provides for her. My buddy tells me she just doesn't know, but every time I see her, I take a honey pack. It's a cheat code, my man. These wives are out here falling in love with honey pack Johnsons, thinking that their husbands are not well equipped and can't do the job. That's because he's not packing his body full of supplements and things like that. He's going in all natural, but he's not doing the job at home, so she'll go to someone else who's going to take some type of medication to rock her world. This is ridiculous, man. I will never get married. Do you hear me? Never, ever, ever, 
ever. I would tell any young man, don't waste your time. Don't be trying to be nice to the girls in school thinking you, you're going to win their hearts over by being the nice guy. When you graduate, still don't do it. Focus on your money. Get your money. The women are going to come. They're going to want to deal with you. Just know that every woman that flirts with you and is trying to get with you, nine times out of ten, she's either married or in a relationship. It's just how it is. I didn't want it to be this way. I had to learn the hard way, and my last relationship wasn't my only relationship, guys. But I never caught a woman doing that type of stuff my recent ex did. I've suspected cheating before, and I left. But walking in on it? Man, I'm ruined and bruised for life. Wow, man. Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you made it out alive. I'm glad you made it out good. You got yourself checked out because she out raw dogging other people in different places that she probably don't know. She may have known that person, but it doesn't matter. It's a group. They were having group activities. Group activities, man. It just that's disgusting. You're like, I'm done. I, I, she scarred me. for. <laughs> she scarred me for life, man. I'm not mad at you, dude. Um. It does suck, man, when you just, you want something real and you do what you have to do, you know, and you thought you found the one, but nope. Look how she tricked you. Even You guys got it in the day, she you guys got it in all day, and she still went somewhere and needed more. She needed more. Now, I can see people making jokes. Oh, you just didn't do it right. <laughs> you didn't do your job. The point is, she's disgusting to go from her dude getting it in raw dog and going somewhere else and getting it in raw dog. She's just nasty. It ain't known him. Oh, he ain't got, you don't know what he's doing. All that. Crap. I don't want to hear none of that in comments. She's disgusting. She's disgusting. Just pitiful, man. I'm glad you made it out, man. Keep doing your thing. You said you started some businesses. Salute to you, man. That's what I like to hear. Guys, if you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'm going to put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. I'm going to catch you guys at the next one.